They weren't avoiding anything. Couldn't care less about a boy in a canoe, and he realized suddenly what they were doing. They were being whales. This was how they lived, and if I live, he thought, I will have gotten to see this. Hi friends, I'm Ashley. Welcome to Darling Cottage Diary. Today we are reviewing the book A North Wind. It's the final novel written by Gary Paulson before he passed. Uh, Gary Paulson is one of my favorite authors. Hatchet was one of my favorite books growing up as well as Brian's Winter and the other books in the series. Um, if you don't know anything about Gary Paulson, he's multiple award-winning author and uh, he wrote a lot of survival style novels, a lot of them from children's perspectives, um, children for surviving plane crashes and figuring out ways to survive in the wild as well as um, that, that would be Hatchet, <laughs> and then um, surviving in a car, surviving in just all these different ways um, and he actually tested his survival techniques. These were not arbitrarily chosen. He tested them himself, and uh, I have yet to read his memoirs, which was also one of his last books that he released, and um, it's supposed to go into quite a lot of his personal life, his early childhood, and um, his love for nature, his travels, and those kind of things. So this book was so good was so good if you've read if you've read um braiding sweetgrass that is kind of a love letter to the earth a love letter to the land on which we live north wind is a love letter to the ocean and as somebody who's grown up by the ocean my whole life well most of my life uh, even when i lived in france i was in lower normandy so i was 15 minutes from the beach i've been around the ocean and I've been in boats in the water a lot. And I have such a healthy fear of the ocean. <laughs> so um, it almost was, it was so sweet to read this book because although the boy whose name we never actually know, but it's told from his perspective and we know that he does have a healthy respect for the ocean, but um, he has an intense love for it. And that was something really beautiful that I've, I, I have felt, but I think my fear has always eclipsed it. And maybe it's because, um, I don't know, perhaps I've never been by myself in the ocean or been in a prolonged time in the ocean. It's always been very short trips. But um, I have felt that way in the woods and I have felt that way of just reverence and a, a love that I can't quite put into words when I've been in the forest by myself. And so um, it was just so sweet to read that from somebody's perspective about this other environment that I'm actually quite afraid of. <laughs> um, and just the observations, a lot of them in his uh, author's note at the end, he talks about a lot of the things that you can tell he experienced the things that he's writing about that this boy is going through. Uh, and it's from his own experiences of sailing multiple times around the world in a, a sailboat. And so if you are into survivalist type of novels, na natural world type of novels, it's a super quick read. It's written at the level of, you know, probably a 11 year old kid, 10, 11 year old kid. But um, I, I, it's great for an adult to read as well, because a lot of the things he describes, I feel like, can be related to at any age. And before I talk any more about the story, if you are new here, welcome. I make journaling content type of videos and sometimes they're ASMR, sometimes I do the voiceover, usually when I'm doing a story review, a book review, a movie review, and I'm journaling about it, I like to do the voiceover. Today, I would have preferred not to, 
but my neighborhood was just awake today. There were dogs barking, there were children running in the street, three people were mowing their lawns, somebody was having a party down the road. It was very loud and although I love the aesthetic of my 1950s wood windows, they do not do much for noise pollution. So it wasn't a great day to do strictly ASMR uh, because of all that in the background. So hence why I'm doing voiceover today. But I do have a large collection of ASMR if you prefer videos with no talking. And I also create digital downloads for my ephemera club and I'm starting to offer some new ones in my shop. I also offer physical goodies in my shop, mini journal kits, confetti, walnuts, things like that. And um, if you're interested in any of that, those links are in the description box below, or you can kind of be pointed to all of that on darlingcottagediary.com. Now, my ephemera club, I do want to take a second to thank them right up front because they support me every month. Some people have been supporting me for over a year and I just it means so, so much. <laughs> so I will go ahead and thank them real fast. Jennifer, Ariel, Rasha, W, Denise, Rachel, Kenna, Alicia, Britt, Leprechaun Mom, Carrie, Carly, Emily, Kim, Effie, Teresa, Patsy, Sasha, Rebecca, Joanna, Kathleen, Cindy, Donna, Krista, Tracy, Tanya, and Nikki. As you probably could have guessed, <laughs> uh, the the medium that I was uh, sculpting a minute ago was trying to mimic waves and this is um, mimicking kind of a distant island with mountaintops, uh, snowy mountaintops. So much of the story takes place with the little boy. <laughs> He's in Norway. He doesn't necessarily uh, know where, but he, uh, the, the beginning of the book has kind of his early saga, if you know anything about Nordic um, Nordic lore. The, the It's written kind of in that type of syntax, and it also has a different font. <laughs> so it's not written in like Elder Futhark or anything, but it has a similar uh, shape to the font to kind of get you up to speed about where the boy is. And he, his mother, you know, was lost giving birth to him, and um, there's not much information about his father. And he's kind of tossed from ship to ship as just a cabin boy helping out with mending nets and cleaning up after sailors on various types of fishing sh uh, ships until, and he doesn't really <laughs> necessarily like this lifestyle, but you know, he gets bounced around from ship to sh ship to ship, and then he ends up on one with a captain named Old Carl. And, you know, he's a nicer old man, older man, and he's gruff, of course, he's a ship captain, but like, he kind of takes the kid under his wing and treats him something like a nephew or a son or something, you know, he takes care of him. And um, there's also a, a younger boy that they call Young Carl <laughs> after the captain. And it, the two kind of grow up as brothers and um, there's a sickness that comes when they're at a whaling camp or a fishing camp one night and it's some sort of stomach concern. It is very gross, but it doesn't last very long in the chapter. <laughs> uh, but they, it, it is, it, 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 you know, people are perishing all around them. And so in order to try to save the boys and give them the best chance, because once old Carl realizes he's sick as well, he kind of gives them supplies, puts them in the canoe and pushes them and says, just head north and stay close to the coast. And so that's what the boys do and they do come sick and the older boy ends up all alone which is a very sad opening to the book but if you know anything about Gary Paulson tragedy usually strikes at the very beginning and then through survivalism and overcoming these hardships they um, you know find such resilience in themselves and that's part of what make his books so intense and also so relatable <laughs> and so beloved by so many people so you have this very intense, sad beginning of this kid just finding himself alone, following the last instructions he got from an adult, which was go north, stay close to the coast, and don't stop. <laughs> so um, he keeps doing that, and he learns as he goes. He's able to find blackberries. He's able to figure out how to catch salmon. 
he learns how to avoid bears, and he's um, all of the adventures that come with with exploring and just going north. He also starts having memories of uh, what he thinks is his mother. He starts having dreams of her that he can never like see her face, but he feels her presence there, taking care of him and watching out for him. He feels like he's you know connected to. A lot of the the ocean life, particularly the whales, the killer whales, the um, the ravens, and just the different interactions he has with all of these creatures, teaches him new lessons. And having <laughs> lessons being taught to him by the ocean as well, the ocean is kind of a character all of its own. A similar kind of, not quite as gentle as the ocean in Moana, but kind of similar in that he kind of can feel when the tides turn, he can, he just learns to observe how she changes. <laughs> and it really, um, he comes to love and respect her as the story goes on. And he, you know, has to experience getting caught in a whirlpool and surviving that. And he almost, after, after a certain amount of the book, he kind of comes to terms with, he could turn around, he could try to go find people, but he's fighting to live and he decides that, you know, he's fighting so hard to live that even if he does die, Odin will take him to Valhalla because he's fighting so hard. <laughs> he's fighting the elements. He's fighting death itself. And so he would rather continue exploring and being alone, especially after growing up in a dark, dirty, smelly bowel of a ship for uh, most of his life, he's found this freedom to just exist and find peace throughout the story, even though he has these challenges come up, which is, I think, such a uh, human, like, like Gary Paulson touched the spine of the human spirit when he, he describes this, because it's like, we, <laughs> even in modern life, we deal with so many things that are stressful and exhausting and you know so many people struggle with like anxiety and depression and um just overall difficulties and to be able to connect to life is a journey life is you know i know that's a cliche thing to say but this book makes it not feel cliche the book makes it feel like it's a universal truth and it's just been described in a cheap way sometimes, which is what makes it feel cliche. It's more of even when at the base level, baseline, strip all the civilization away, strip all the other people away <laughs> when it comes down to it. The existence of us, of other of plants and animals and everything else, it's just the the will to endure, and that is what will endure. And something else, you know, as somebody who obviously values journaling, <laughs> obviously values uh, recording things, recording my thoughts, recording uh, events, you know, going to do fun things and um, celebrate people I love and celebrate the turning of seasons and holidays and books I've read and things like that. It's uh, He comes to a point where he finds this really nice slab of wood and he decides he needs to start recording the events of his journey and he needs to start but he doesn't know how to write you know he doesn't know how to make runes he doesn't know anything of the civilized way to do this so he starts carving pictures of you know a bear coming up on him and he getting away and <laughs> a whirlpool trying to suck him down and getting away and finding himself in in a massive um, playground of whales who do not notice he is there because he's very tiny compared to, to him. He looks like a leaf on the water to them. And he is just trying to stay out of the way so that he doesn't get crushed by jumping whales. And so he takes this piece of wood and it becomes kind of his prized possession as he goes through the story because he's carving and then sanding it with the sand and burnishing it with the fire to add um, edges and add shading and he's working really hard on it and anytime he has you know salmon he'll use some of the oil oily skin to 
oil the wood so it just becomes this really beautiful shiny piece of art and that was another part of the human spirit that I loved how it was illuminated that we all need we all need to make art we all need to make things and be creative because that somehow feeds us <laughs> even making this I was thinking about that and it took me a long time this <laughs> I know editing magic got it down to like 30 minutes but this actually took me about two days to make with several hours because I was fussy cutting a whole lot of stuff letting the paint dry or letting the ink dry letting the uh, sculpting medium dry just all of that <laughs> it took a while and so I was just thinking about it it's like I'm, this is taking so much time I have I have a list a laundry list of things to do at taxes and filling orders and, and just all of these things I need to do but doing this calmed me and made me feel so happy and so proud of creating of what I was creating and it's like I think anybody can relate to that who has found a creative medium they really like obviously for Gary Paulson it was mostly writing <laughs> it was his career but the boy explore, explores in his mind because you know it's kind of an omnipresent book you can hear his thoughts of him talking to himself and he's asking himself you know why am I doing this it's taking me hours it's it's I could be hunting for more food but you know I've been able to find all the food I need and I've been able to smoke the salmon and put it up in the canoe and there's been berries every place I go <laughs> and you know I figured out a way to stay away from the other predators you know, so go into small islands where I know there aren't any bears, so... And he decides that he is making this um, storyboard, essentially. He's making the storyboard so that when he looks back and he's trying to remember something, it's easier for him to remember. So that when he is trying to think about what happened when... You know, what came first? Was it the whirlpool or the whales? Or was the, <laughs> when did I first find the black bears? And he, so not only is he looking for the continuity of his story and his life, especially because he doesn't have other humans to story tell with, which is also a very fundamental human thing. We learn by telling stories. <laughs> and so he, he kind of realizes that, okay, well, it's too document these things in a way that I can look back at my life and remember things and maybe one day there will be another boy who has to go north to escape the sickness and he'll find it and he'll know my story and maybe he'll have a similar story and it's just the the unfolding of the thoughts that he has about why he's documenting and creating this thing I could relate to so hard as somebody who loves to scrapbook and journal. I have a bookcase of journals in my closet that I started, I've always done journaling and making a diary, but it's been a consistent practice since 2020. And I wonder if a lot of people are this similar that, you know, we had a very big global event happen around that time and made a lot of us look at our life and maybe changed a lot of our habits so I'm curious if any of y'all kind of started <laughs> started picked up your own creative thing around that time and have stuck with it because you remembered maybe from childhood that it caused you so much joy or you know realized it for the first time that it's a joyous thing anyway so these themes of the book not uh, as well as you know this <laughs> big heady themes as well as just the descriptions of nature, the similar ruggedness but coziness that he finds throughout the book, even in these circumstances that seem harsh, he's good. He gets to the, he gets through the struggle part of it where he is no longer afraid. He works through the fear of what he's doing to where he can just enjoy the ride. And I think that's an important thing for all of us to remember. <laughs> so. I loved this book. It was sad because it's the last book he wrote, but I'm glad that I read it. I need to continue reading. He wrote, he wrote so many. I need to continue reading 
his books, but I think the car is going to be the next one I read. But anyway, if you have read a book that similarly uh, made you think about your life in big ways, definitely drop it in the comments. I'm always looking for book recommendations. <laughs> Regarding the page itself that I'm creating, the I tried to include as many elements from the book that stood out to me as possible. The uh, forest, of course, but he never goes into the forest. He always stays on the beach because he's scared of the bears, rightly so. So he stays on the beach, but he smokes his fish, you know, on the on the beach, and he'll pick the he'll pick his berries and you know, he'll seize the birds and everything else. And then, um, the whales are a huge connection to him, a huge part of him. Um, there's a really sweet part where he connects with the whale and he, he feels like it's, you know, the spirit of his mom and, um, a couple of the islands really stand out. So I wanted to have this kind of island out in the, in the background. And then like he was like, we're looking at him sitting on maybe the bigger coast and he's looking at the next little safety island he wants to go to that he knows there aren't any bears on um the salmon he it, that little that is the singular piece of fish ephemera that i had <laughs> so i'm glad i kept that tiny little cut off of a random old cookbook that i found because i used it further reinforcing my hoarding tendencies but i digress another part that was really important was um his little connection with an iceberg that he found and uh it is really cool how he describes it that it's just this the blue glass that he's looking through and um that's there it looks like you know there's a bunch of that he thinks they're people sliding off of it into the water and it's actually it, it's a different animal and and so i didn't want to write on the spread itself except for the I'll put the author in the title but I wanted to write a few thoughts about the book and so I thought that this could be a little writing tuck spot <laughs> in my wave pocket so if you've been around here for a while you know that I like to make the focus on the art part and then figure out ways to write around or you know have a hidden writing spot because the artwork is what I'm more more interested in, I guess. That's the part that I'm more concerned about. Anyway, I will let y'all listen to the nice glass pen ASMR. Thank you so much for being here. If you made it to the end, please leave me a little seal or whale emoji in the comments and let me know what your favorite element of the video was, also about the books um, that you know, changed your life. I've asked about other books in the past that made you feel certain ways, but what are some books that gave you some perspective on humanity in general? It was very deep for a Sunday morning. I'm sorry. I've been very inside my head this week. Anyway, enjoy your week. I will see y'all next Sunday. Bye friends. <laughs>